Okay, so pop-ups, we have them appearing here, and they have this particular styling, which is nice. They fade in and out, they look pretty good. You know, one gets closed automatically when another one gets added, or opened. Uh, and you can see that we're just adding them through bind pop-up. So we're going to continue to add them through bind pop-up for now. Um, can, that's a, a fine way to add them. There's going to be more ways as we move on into more and more complicated things when we want to refer specifically to certain pop-ups and open them independently or, you know, different kinds of things like that. But in this case, in right now, I'm going to focus a little bit on styling them. So we can actually inspect these pop-ups and we can see that they are just classes um, with, you know, styles that we'll be able to mess with. So there's leaflet-popup um, and we get a bunch of leaflet content wrapper and stuff like that. So we can mess with it in... Um, in the inspector here, which is a great way to, to play around with, with things. So maybe I don't really like having that much padding in there. It's kind of taking up a lot of extra space it doesn't need. So right here we have this uh, margin around the leaflet pop-up content. If we take that away, you see it gets really small. So maybe we can adjust that. We'll just make the margin um, just five pixels. Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. And uh, there we go. It kind of sits there. Let's inspect again. Okay, and uh, I don't want the border radius either. So on this one, let's see if I call it border radius zero. Okay, so now we have square pop-up. That's nice. Um, and I do like the shadow. You could get rid of the shadow as well. You can see uh, by clicking on and off certain CSS properties, and you could change the shadow. You could make it much larger. You can also see it can change the background. Let's say we want the um, background to be black instead and then the text to be white. So that's okay, although now the bottom piece there is kind of messed up. So let's see if we can change that too. So it's a little harder to find. So what this actually is, is it's another div here with the leaflet pop-up tip container. Um, so we can maybe color that. We will have to actually be a little bit clever about it because giving, um, sorry, giving the background this black actually does something totally unexpected. It fills this whole area as black. So what you actually is, is it's actually a border color. Um, oh, maybe not quite. Let's see. We may have to do just a little playing. So here's the tip right there. So let's let's get rid of this border color here. So here in the tip, we have the background white. My bad. We can actually make the background black easily like that. And it works. Um, on some of the other... It may be uh, in other places they use borders sometimes to do this kind of pointy thing. Anyway, in this case, no big deal. So let's go here. I kind of wanted to modify this a little more, maybe make the font size uh, 20 pixels. There, that's nice. Um, again, nothing really amazing here going on. You could add a background URL. You could make, you could add a little bit of something else. But let's just copy a lot of these. So we have some styles on a leaflet pop-up content wrapper. We will make a style. And this could be also a separate style sheet, if you preferred, with some CSS. We go here, and we're going to copy over some of the properties that we made. There we go, and there was a bit more of that. So let's go back to here. We also gave the leaflet pop-up content a margin of 5 pixels. And we gave the pop-up tip a black background. And let's reload and make sure this all works. Yeah, looks great. Looks very good. We can also get rid of this um, thing if we want by just doing it, uh, making that display none, for instance, if we want. I think it's, we can also add it later as an option when we create a pop-up independently. But for now, if we needed a fast solution, we would just do that. And now the pop-up's only closed by clicking off. So great. Um, now if we wanted to add a little bit more custom content, we're going to be doing a lot more of this as we go throughout. But uh, you should be able to just add in HTML right off the bat. So if we go, for instance, to where we're doing this, if we, um, let's say we wanted a list in there, or yeah, just an image. So let's go get a you know placeholder, or yeah, let's go get placeholder.com. It's a nice site to just get your sample image. There we go. And we're going to put a source of the image there, like that. And let's see what that's going to do for us. So 
so we see there's a big image obviously the pop-up is kind of screwy it didn't quite hold the image size correctly so we're gonna have to adapt something here um, so why don't we make the image a little smaller first of all so make it maybe uh, maybe I could just modify this so that it's only a hundred by 50 okay so now when it loads it's still sticking out from everything but we can just like any typical way that we would do these things uh, you can see it has a width of 51 it's kind of stuck at all right so when we do this um, we're doing it again we're doing it with bind pop-up and that limits us just slightly uh, so we're actually gonna try initializing one of these in its standard way uh, through something called the pop-up so there is the l dot pop-up just like we've made other things you can see here they have bind up pop-up but you sometimes want to make one with its own options so let's do a pop-up here and we can see it has a latitude longitude everything so in this kind of pop-up uh, we can actually provide options to it um, and we're gonna work a lot more with this so I'm just doing this for now to get us kind of uh, set and, and going here so in this case uh, we can maybe pass it this HTML. Oh, sorry. Okay. And I don't really care if this breaks. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to put this HTML right in there. Again, we have that image. Okay. And let's reload this. So you can see it's opened and it is now the right size. Um, partly this is just uh, because it's a different method, partly it's just uh, luck. <laughs> You're going to get uh, things working a little differently in different circumstances. So let's make it, uh, and you can see we have 350 wide. So here we'll add the options and we'll make it a maximum, I don't know, 400. And now it encapsulates that whole thing. But now that pop-up is not actually tied to the rest of the page. And you can also see that now this one seems to be holding it a little better. Um, so you can see this pop-up might be something that is like working across different pop-ups or is it messing with something? This one still works okay. So you can see how it works uh, with pop-ups being a little bit jumpy in terms of styling. Uh, and, and just what options you're giving them. So generally what I would recommend is having one uh, pop-up that you create and then you call it on each of the different, you attach it to each of the different markers. You can just say bind pop-up and actually pass this pop-up right in here. And let's see how that works. There we go. We can see it passes it right in. And that's really nice because um, then we can set our options in one place. Ultimately, we're going to be doing even more with this. We're going to be giving them dynamic options, so we may be creating these individually. There's a lot of different aspects. We're going to be setting the content separately, you know, just have one pop-up, and whenever a marker is clicked, we set the content of it using something like this, rather than binding the pop-up. That's actually how we're normally going to be doing it. Create one pop-up, just have it sit here, and then, and then whenever we click a pop-up, click a marker we create some content relevant to that marker inside the pop-up but I just want to get you a sense of knowing a couple different ways to set pop-ups create them give them content style them you're gonna be doing a lot more complicated things but remember you can add in any custom HTML you want style it directly from your style sheet it's very straightforward com compared to some other mapping API's like Google Maps alright so in the next section we're going to move on a little more uh, to GeoJSONs and some slightly simpler and faster topics, uh, but other ones that are very crucial for your interactive mapping.